They know how to get it done off the court. They both have proven that they can develop it on the court. South Carolina really nipped with the injury bug throughout this season, hasn't really been able to maximize just to the level that they thought they would this season. They still want to go out with a win. Torres has first serve, targets Bissler. An opportunity here for the Lady Vols. They'll go to Fingal. And the first point of the match to Tennessee. No surprises, go back to Fingal, the big left side swing, which she's really developed out of her game over the last several years. She's beginning to take the ball at the peak of her reach, working her way around the block much easier than she did in her freshman year. Johnson from the back row. with a response for South Carolina. Well, sometimes you get it right on your highlight players of the day. How about a kill for Fingal? And then the answer from Elena Johnson, getting things done out of the backcourt. Good scramble by South Carolina to find the offensive attack there in Elena Johnson for the kill. You know how to pick them, Paul. And an ace for Lauren McCutcheon. Two to one lead for the Gamecocks early on. Good start for McCutcheon with that running float serve, catching Tennessee off guard. Another floater from her causing problems for the Tennessee pass. Fingal with a tip off the hands of Anadi and down on the South Carolina side. Had that ball not been touched by Anadi, I think Keun Flitcher would have been in position to make the dig, but as soon as that ball glanced off the block, all bets were off, that ball goes to the floor. Fingal tied for the team lead with 29 aces. And the gap is there, the connection between Claire Wilson and Abi Anadi. That's a ball they've been working on all season. It has been improving on that connection. The gap set to Anadi. Anadi has proven she can get into the gap quickly with a quality reach. The question is, will that ball be delivered properly for her to get that attempt? Here's Bissler. And a service error. We saw that last kill, Paul, from Anadi. She's coming off seven kills, which are the most for Gamecock middle since October 11th against Georgia, which is a span of 10 games. Been making an effort to get it to the middles a little more in this one. As love it with the miss. And South Carolina will make their customary switch this season. They've mostly used a 6-2 setting system. They had to flip to a 5-1 for a stretch when two of their three setters were out, running the 5-1 with Claire Wilson, but back to the 6-2 setting system with Kimmy Thompson on the serve. We're gonna have a Gamecock in the net. Point to Tennessee. Tyra Smith in the net. Tyra Smith seeing a little bit of action later on in this season. They're just fractionally getting her forearm on the net for the penalty. Smith. Her eighth match of the season, coming off a career high five kills at Florida on Wednesday. Johnson. The defense is there for South Carolina. Smith and Rupert combining. A little bit of tension there from Caroline Kerr. She was trying to just send it over, and you could see as soon as it left her hands, that ball was not clearing the net. She shrugs her shoulders in dismay. She'll have to get it back on service reception on the serve of Riley Whitesides. Whitesides, a senior from Greenville, South Carolina, hit that 1,000 career kill milestone earlier in the year against Kentucky. 19 aces on the season for Whitesides. This one's a service error. Both teams trying to shake off the turkey tryptophan here. A very error-prone matchup early on here in this set. Several service errors and a couple of attack errors to go along with them. Here's Kirk. The teams trade service errors now two in the match for both sides. Four of the ten points tallied on service errors. Neither team very pleased about that. Ellie Ruprich can make an aggressive serve, though we'll have to see how this one goes. Serve love it. Oh, straight down out of the middle. That was Kiki Granberry. Yikes, Kiki Granberry well located in the gap from Caroline Kerr. Really more of a middle quick, and Tyra Smith 
not in time to get over to help, dropping that hand in just a little late. Granberry does the rest. And Thompson sets up her middle, Abby Anadi. How about the answer from Anadi? So early on for South Carolina, the key has been getting Anadi involved on the attack. Two kills already on the ball game. Normally, South Carolina does not involve their middles as often, but if the ball control is there, Anadi looks like she's going to get delivered a few more balls on the day. I think that's a good strategy against a quality Tennessee defense. Love it, played it. That was Fingal. And the point to Tennessee. Too much power from Fingal. Fingal is able to see the angle, hits it right on the defense of Claire Wilson. Wilson cannot cushion well enough to keep that ball in the line of play. Libero Torres. One-handed set from Claire Wilson. We're going to have a lady foul in the net. Erica Lovett with a micro touch on the net of sorts. So now she'll come out and in service reception will be Mackenzie Plant coming into play after the error from Lovett. Straight down in the middle, this time it's Raven Chase, the grad student from Toronto, Canada. Chase getting the job done. So right now, South Carolina spreading their block and leaving just enough room for Chase to bounce the ball. I like that late set from Caroline Kerr, very deceptive. We're gonna look for that all ball game from the fantastic freshman setter. Speaking of fantastic players, there's Keenan Fletcher on the right side. Fletcher has really come into her own, earning Player of the Week honors a couple of weeks ago. Really starting to find her rhythm over there on the right side as she has played throughout the season. Another opportunity for Fletcher. This time goes cross. They'll push it out to Elena Johnson. Johnson's ball was going to go for a kill. However, the net touch is the motion from uh, the down ref against Tennessee. So regardless, credit the point to South Carolina. Several of those already in this first set. Fingal from the back row. This one got an arm under it, which is too much power from Morgan Fingal. It's the power and it's the rhythm. Fingal still flawless on the day. Four of Tennessee's nine points credited to Fingal on the attack. They're out of the back row. Fantastic swing by her. Again, well located on the set from Kerr. So dynamic. Leads this team with 387 kills coming into today on the overpass. That was Janasia Moore who cleaned it up. Making no mistake as Moore. Moore could have gone straight down with it. Instead, she smartly angles it to ensure that no player is within range to make the dig on the South Carolina side. And an ace off the tape. And that's Mackenzie Plante, the freshman from Dripping Springs, Texas. Let's take another look. Plante serves Bissler. McCutcheon from the back row off the tape. And back over. Somehow, the Gamecocks got underneath that. That was Bissler. And they'll get the point. Side of 11. Wonderful scrappy work on the side of South Carolina. How about the pancake? Brunch is served here in the Carolina Volleyball Center. And then the smart move from Elena Johnson to go to the back line. The roll shot located perfectly for the point. Stealing a point, that's Caroline Kerr. Good choice by Kerr, that ball was sailing and was probably gonna go over the net, but she is deceptive. She keeps both of her hands up until the last second when she turns and gets that ball down. Johnson on serve receive, she'll get the return set. Her attack is long to so the point to Tennessee. Johnson with a hot start there 
locating the ball well, just the execution barely on the miss. There were no defenders located there. However, she sails the ball just long. Eckler serves McCutcheon. Set a little low for Ruprick. Janasia Moore goes down the line. And Paul, she's a player that's overlooked a little bit just because of the prowess of Fingal, but Moore is eighth in the SEC and kills per set herself. Very much so. She really does a fine job exploding at the net. She's not the tallest player on the team by any means, but good choices by her and plenty of power to come. Johnson gets the kill for South Carolina. She'll check out, and Riley Whitesides will play the back row. Senior from Greenville, South Carolina. Fingal. Whitesides with the dig, it's coming over, and easily put down by Granberry. Will bring us to out in the highlight a moment ago. McCutcheon off the block and out of play. She'll earn the point for South Carolina. For South Carolina to find success, it can't just be Elena Johnson who's having a good ball game today out at the pin, four kills hitting 500. But they're going to need that OH2 or second outside in McCutcheon to score if they want to have success against Tennessee. A whistle on a Gamecock in the net. I believe that was Abianati. More unforced errors on the South Carolina side. You can't get away with those against such a threatening offense of Tennessee. Just too many flaws on the South Carolina side, and that is the difference in this ballgame. Here's Ashlyn King. He's looking for the line. It's a service error for Tennessee, their third. Key set of rotations for South Carolina here. Keun Fletcher, the, easily the hottest offensive player for South Carolina for the last half of the season. Now with three rotations in the front row, getting the ball delivered to her by Claire Wilson on serve. Fingal, it's sent back. Another opportunity, this time tips it past the block and just out of the reach of a diving Keun Fletcher. Now we get to see the finesse of Fingal. Smart move there. She'd been dialing up power for all of her swings. So this time, what does she do? She pulls back, goes with the tip, perfectly located out of the range of Keun Fletcher. McCutcheon, a big swing off the arms of Torres. Credit the kill to Lauren McCutcheon. Raven Chase had made it over there to close on the block. However, that attack up and over from Lauren McCutcheon. McCutcheon with a nice job going over the reaching chase into the power alley for the point. Fingal, wow. beautiful cut shot from Morgan Fingal. How about opening up those shoulders with Fingal and she, I love the reaction from Fingal. Fingal has always uh, behaved in this manner. You're never gonna quite tell if she's having a good day or a bad day by looking her, her in the eye. She's just a steady player, super focused and ex exemplary there on that big cut shot. Fletcher responds for South Carolina. And the libero Torres maybe would have liked to have seen that ball go over her shoulder, but she was a little bit doubtful as to whether or not the ball touched the block. So she did put a reaching hand up there, but out of range to dig the Keune Fletcher swing. Fingal a tip from the back row. She's denied. Again, the block from South Carolina. And Cox will set it up. Bissler. Fletcher. Good answer there. The sense was that that play may have been going south on the touch of Rubric, but instead the libero for South Carolina is able to kick that ball out for a quality swing. Going over with it once again, that's Caroline Kerr. Two players on the ball there to make the dig. A little bit of hesitation. I think if either goes full out, I think they can get that ball, but too much indecision. Credit the point to Kerr. 
Here's the SEC Co-Freshman of the Week. Won that award three of the last four weeks. Ruprick gets the kill for South Carolina. Back and forth we go. Lady Vols lead 19-18. Getting that ball in a scramble to still be able to utilize the middles. What a good opportunity for South Carolina. We hadn't seen as much of that earlier in the season, but getting that gap set to go, Ruprick gets the ball down. Moore is blocked, but the block is out of play. Oh, and the fan faithful for the Gamecocks were yelling, cheering when they saw that block happen, but that ball blocked out of bounds. South Carolina will have to do it on service reception. They were in position, but tooled by the Tennessee swing. Chattanooga transfer Eckler. Serves McCutcheon. Ruprecht behind the center. Oh, she's dug out. Moore, Bissler returns the favor. Johnson, Bissler there in coverage. Another opportunity. Longest rally so far. Moore. Out of play and the point to South Carolina. And you made the call, Ellie Rupert behind the center. That only happens because Claire Wilson now in the front row. South Carolina conserving, conserving substitutions. They're in a 6-2 setting system, but they've also subbed to Whiteside several times. So Wilson will go all the way around here on the block. Moore had to punch that over. Lauren McCutcheon through the hands of the libero, Torres. And we are tied at 20 here in set one. And Coach Rackham Watt is considering a timeout here. And of course, she is going to make that. Great get for the Lady Vols. She was the number 63 recruit in the nation, a state champion out of St. Thomas Moore High School. Hometown of Champaign, Illinois. Service error out of the timeout. Gives the Lady Vols a 21-20 lead. They'll have to get it back on service reception. However, it's important to credit South Carolina. They've got to serve aggressively if they want to find success against Tennessee. Kerr serves McCutcheon. Rupert behind the center. Moore, roll shot. Coming tight at the net. A whistle, and Tennessee is going to be called in the net. Tennessee questioning whether or not South Carolina was in the net instead. But I think it was ball on the side of, Carol uh, of, of Wilson, Claire Wilson, sending that ball over. So of course, the Tennessee squad is going to challenge whether or not there was a net call against them. So is going to stand on the floor an immediate call and thanks to uh, the crew for getting such a good shot on that one to clearly delineate that that point should be uh, awarded correctly to South Carolina. So Coach Rackham Watt loses the challenge. We're tied at 21 here in the first set. Nellie Ruprick, senior from Beverly Hills, Michigan, serves Torres. And this call will go against South Carolina and Coach Mendoza is not pleased with the call, Paul. Oh, and the call is interference, so the call is that the ball had yet to make it to the plane of the net. Therefore, the touch by Carolina would be illegal. Oh, and I think Coach Mendoza has a case on this one that would have otherwise been interference against Caroline Kerr playing a ball from the back row that was above the plane. Pushes it out to McCushion. Ron McCutcheon gets the kill on a beautiful set from Claire Wilson. Bombs away, and again, taking that ball at the peak of her reach. This is one of the most important uh, components of an outside hitter's attack, even on the shoot set, to try to take that ball at the peak of the reach to get out of the way of the block. McCutcheon does so successfully. Fingal responds for Tennessee, and the Lady Vols are two away here in set one. Good against the grain set from Caroline Kerr. Kerr was running toward the left side, kicks it back to an available Fingal. The block was in position, but maybe not quite balanced enough. Fingal gets the tool and the point. Seventh kill of the match for Fingal, who's hitting an even 700. I think Coach Rackham Watt will take those numbers from any player 
And I think Morgan Fingal will take those numbers here in set one for sure. McCutcheon, she's dug out by Torres. But it falls on the Tennessee side, and we're tied at 23. McCutcheon getting hot at the right time. A couple of big kills in a row, but now she will rotate to the backcourt on serve. She did miss her last one. We'll see if she can get in rhythm on this one. Key point in the ball game. More on serve, receive Fingal. Bissler will set up Johnson. And Elena Johnson gets the kill for South Carolina. It's set point. The outside hitters for South Carolina really started to get hot. Did the same against Mississippi State as well. So that component has improved for South Carolina here late in the season. They'll go back to Fingal. She's denied. Abianati gets the block on Fingal. And South Carolina takes a set 25-23. Might go down or be injured or something like that. So nice depth on the left side, as you pointed out, for South Carolina. Moore pounds one in for the first point of the second set. Big swing from Janasia Moore, and that ball gets into the gap. No problem there when that seam is available. Any one of the Tennessee attackers are going to put the ball down. Johnson from the back row. Plante is there, but it's off of her and out of play. Plante not too pleased with that one. She voiced it vociferously as soon as that ball glanced off her arms. Off the tape, Plante saves that. McCutcheon got under the ball for South Carolina. This is pushed out to Moore, and the dig is back over. Another opportunity for Moore, played easily by Wilson. Fletcher off the hands of the block. Moore. Out of play, the point to South Carolina. Tennessee on the scramble the whole way. I thought South Carolina made a mistake on the outlet set. Caroline Kerr was nowhere to be found, having already scrambled for a set that she went to the floor on. But instead, the outlet went to the other side, so a double block was available. However, eventually that ball goes down on the Tennessee side. Tennessee really out of sorts there. Plante with a quality dig. Kerr on the run the entire rally. Dig from McCutcheon on Fingal. Johnson. Nothing a diving Plante can do about it. And that location on the set from Wilson continues to improve. She had location challenges last year and the year before, but she's really starting to locate this ball perfectly on the outside for the kills. A little bit more on Wilson in that location. The problem with those outside sets Historically, they were tending either to be tight or falling just a little bit short. These have been located where the outside attackers are not getting trapped by the blockers. Love that adjustment from Wilson and that improvement over her career. And she sets up a naughty beautifully. How about a gap set? for Anadi. South Carolina ran a few of these in set number one. They're perfectly located to Anadi, maybe a little bit low, but enough for Anadi to get in range and take the swing. Third kill of the match for Abi. It's quite a response from Kiki Granberry. So Anadi runs the gap set. Kiki Granberry says, I'll do you one better. She takes that gap set and buzzes it past Lauren McCutcheon. McCutcheon almost getting out of the way of it, but the ball glances off of her. Another point for Tennessee. Granberry hitting 343 coming into today. That's good for seventh in the SEC. Off the block and out of play. A kill for Elena Johnson. This time the block in position was Fingal on that block. However, the ball is tooled off, so Johnson recognizing that that block was well in front of her. That ball goes off the hands for the tally. Team high, eight kills for Elena Johnson. 
Torres on serve receive. They go back to Granbury. Fingal. Just deflected to Kimmy Thompson. And again, it's that late delivery. Everybody in the gym knows it should probably go to Fingal, but Kerr waits, does not telegraph that set at the last second, kicks it back to Fingal, leaving just a little bit of weakness in that block. Fingal overwhelms the defense and gets it done. And service error for Tennessee. Each team now with four service errors. Bradley White sides will be back to serve. Team leader in aces. That was Chase out of the middle for the Lady Vols. Chase, grad transfer from Eastern Michigan, where she was a two time first team all max selection. She comes into today hitting 378. Made her Tennessee debut on October 4th against Alabama. And another block that goes just errant on the side of Tennessee. Tennessee has been in position, but these balls glancing just off. Credit another kill to Lauren McCutcheon. Fingal. How about the back row attack when you need one to get the juice back? Go to Fingal. It doesn't matter if Fingal's front row or back row. As you see, Fingal takes this ball out of the pipe, so a lefty could take a D ball out of the right back, but instead she takes it out of the pipe, bombing that ball into the right sideline for the point. Tyra Smith on the attack for South Carolina. This is Moore, the dig from Bissler. McCutcheon. Free ball opportunity. Options for Kimmy Thompson. She goes to Anadi. Kimmy Thompson back in the ball game, back to the 6-2 setting system. South Carolina finished with the 5-1 and set one. So they're going to begin this game with the set system, the two-setter system. How about the middle quick from Anadi? just overwhelming the libero in Jay Torres. Four kills on four attacks for Abiyanadi, hitting 1,000 balls that efficient? Uh, I would take it. Can't take any better than that. Abiyanadi, though, smartly has been taking these swings. It's mostly been her approach that has been so smart. She's jumping into the gaps properly. She's taking her approach properly on the middle quick. Like that improvement from Abiyanadi. Well, how about the one-handed set from Claire Wilson? Sets up another kill for Abi Anadi. Anadi remains perfect now with five kills on those five attempts. And there she had to get creative, pulling out the gadget arm of sorts to get the reach on the miss set, getting the ball down. Two-point lead for the Gamecocks. Moore, the set was low, and it puts her into the block. We're making our way into set two. My observation here is that Tennessee just looks a little bit tired and off of their game. A long SEC schedule takes its toll on any team. And right now, Tennessee needs to improve and find a little bit of energy, not only to even up this matchup, but to try to come out of the Carolina Volleyball Center with a win. And that was a much better set from Kerr. Moore delivers the kill. Kerr back to serve. Targets McCutcheon. Elena Johnson off the outside. Wonderful combination. It's the gap set to Anadi. Anadi shows gap, but then instead of setting to Anadi, kick it out to Elena Johnson for the finish. The block was frozen and stuck on Anadi, leaving enough space for the Johnson kill. That's why it's so important to be able to establish those middles, right, Paul, just to keep the block honest? 
that's really what it's all about in South Carolina throughout the season. It has not always had that opportunity. Here they're establishing them quite nicely. Abianati with five swings on the ball game. Ellie Ruprich with four, and they've been quite effective on all of those swings. Johnson off of Fingal. Another kill for Elena Johnson. She's in double digits. She now has 10. Johnson with 10 kills, and we're really only midway through set number two. It tells you just how effective she is. So she's picking up right where she left off on Wednesday with that effective ball game against Florida where she hit 364. It's coming over, and there's Ruprich. She buries it for the Gamecocks. Nice poker face from Ellie Ruprich. I'd be pretty pumped up after that one, letting it rip out of the middle on that overpass. We're going to see a switch on the Tennessee side trying to shake up the service reception. Ashlyn King will again come in. She saw some time in set number one. And service error for South Carolina. That's their seventh. They'll have a three-point lead here in set two. They lead this match one set to none. Abby Eckler, junior from Flower Mound, Texas. So is Bissler. Elena Johnson continues to pound away for the Gamecocks. And we saw the coaching staff urge the block to give just a little bit of line, so then what did Johnson do? Johnson rips the line, overwhelming the defense and Caroline Kerr in the right back. Elena Johnson really establishing herself as the go-to today for South Carolina. And there's an ace for Riley Whitesides, her 20th ace of the season. And she is hitting a perfect 100% on the attack. A service error for the Gamecocks. That's their eighth. You have to serve a team like Tennessee tough. You can't, unrealistic to expect to ace them a ton, but you have to give them less options because their offense is so efficient. You can see how aggressive South Carolina is today, Paul. They have been fearless from the service line. They've missed a few, but as you pointed out, they're not going to get away with serving lollipops to Tennessee. And for South Carolina, they just continue to run their offense super effectively. This time located from Kimmy Thompson. Kick it out to McCutcheon for the big swing. Seventh kill for McCutcheon. Chase had to reach for it. Plenty of wingspan in the 6'5 Raven Chase. And Chase had to go after it. In the end, she was able to find an errant hand to get the tool. Chase just literally going and getting that ball. That'll allow Plante to serve. And Plante will get the ace. Freshman from Texas. She's from a great athletic family. Her brother Austin plays baseball at Washington State. Mother and father were athletes at UTEP. Dad played football, her mom ran track. Torres tracks that down, and it's a free ball opportunity for South Carolina. McCutcheon. And again, Plante not too happy about that defense in the backcourt, that ball glancing off of her arms. She is very vocal about not being able to play that ball, but she was really faced off against McCutcheon one-on-one, -on -one. McCutcheon taking a 100% swing. That's going to be a tough one for anybody to dig. There's Chase hitting behind the setter. We haven't seen that quick set yet. We've seen the slide from Chase, but not yet the back quick. So nice choice to switch things up from the coaching staff motioning in to go with the back quick, getting that ball to go. Anadi, and it's long to the first attack error of the day for Abby Anadi. Tennessee is closing this gap. They were down 
by, to the tune of 17-13 just moments ago and 15-10 earlier in the game. Tennessee starting to claw back into this second set. Keown Fletcher puts an end to the rally. And again, with South Carolina in system, and Carolina's Abi Anadi hitting so well, the block has to keep one eye on Anadi. That leaves the gap for Keown Fletcher and the finish. It was coming tight, so Kerr goes over with it. A free ball opportunity for the Lady Vols. Moore, played by McCutcheon. Keown Fletcher. Fingal keeps it alive. Fletcher off the tape. It was headed in our direction, Paul. And we couldn't quite get a play on it, Dave. That ball had a lot of open space, though. Hewn Fletcher just missed it. As soon as that ball clipped the tape, it created three or four more feet on that distance on the attack. That ball sails wide. Curse serves Bissler. Elena Johnson, it's sent back. Another opportunity denied again. Granbury closes with Fingal. I like that choice by Granbury to go ahead and take it. That would be a unique decision there with Fingal's left arm and Granbury's right arm. Both have dominance to take. Currently ranked eighth in the nation. They'd like that number to climb Paul as well, just to potentially avoid Nebraska. Well, and avoiding Nebraska, everybody wants to avoid Nebraska. Yes, they got their first loss yesterday to Wisconsin. However, that doesn't mean that that might not be their last loss of the season and possibly in the NCAAs. NCAA, Nebraska, one of the top favorites to make their way to the Final Four and to the final game in late December. It's a two-point lead for the Gamecocks here in set two. They lead this match one set to none. Kind of Bissler awaiting her opportunity to serve. Transfer from Miami. Great set by Kerr, but Moore is denied. And the name of the game there is that service pressure forced Caroline Kerr to run all the way over to the left side. The only place she could set was the left side attacker. And of course, clamping down, Keown Fletcher with Ellie Ruprick. Kerr pushes it out to Moore. This time, Janasia Moore delivers. Moore, no problem against one block. Fantastic swing by her on the attack. We were talking a little bit about the Kentucky ball game and how that result impacts Tennessee. Kentucky currently up one set to none against Florida in that ball game. So if Kentucky wins, they win the SEC outright. If Kentucky loses and Tennessee were to pull it off here today, they'd be co-champs. Just to split this season series. Service error for Tennessee. And it's a three-point lead for the Gamecocks. And they're going to bring in a serving sub in Elizabeth McElveen, a freshman from Rock Hill. As Tennessee continues to try to sub their way into rhythm, already 12 subs against for Tennessee. Great serve by McElveen. And the point goes to the Lady Vols in Granbury. And the R1 had the best view of it, motioning that the ball was actually in. He's going to say, hey, there's no point to review. Coach Mendoza recognizes and respects the call of the R1. Result served for Tennessee. It's Abby Eckler. Targets Bissler. Elena Johnson. She'll get the kill off the touch. South Carolina is three away here in set two. And Coach Mendoza jumped out of his seat awaiting that touch call. 
the players all looked around knowing that there was a touch. You'll get no challenge on the side of Tennessee. They know that there was a touch on that block. Ninth service error for the Gamecocks. And that's a critical miss there on the serve of Elena Johnson. That now brings Fingal to the back row. Fingal's still a threat to run that back row attack. We'll see the lefty serve, an aggressive serve here from the Lady Volunteers. Johnson, an attack error, and Tennessee's within one. Time out, South Carolina. Errors in bunches for Elena Johnson. Johnson with a hot, hot start, but they're the SEC play next season. We'll have to wait and see what Vanderbilt's going to look like as well as they start up their program. Yes, in 25, they will be rip raring and ready to go. Outstanding dig from Torres. That's Plante on the outside, getting the kill for the Lady Vols, her first kill of the match. And the debate from Coach Mendoza is why was a double not called on that one, but a double is not called on spin. Of course, a double is called on the actual visual contact that they see. They did not acknowledge a double contact, therefore tied at 22. Elena Johnson off the tape. Plante. Ponte just missed in the power alley. That was still the right choice into the deep angle. Ponte fractionally missed it. Couldn't have missed by better than six inches. Love this choice by her, but that ball sails. Oh, just wide by, by just a hair. Finkel from the back row. Tied at 23. And we will get a challenge. The challenge is that on her swing. And it is confirmed and in call for Morgan Fingal. So a key point in the ball game. So no overrule there. The call stands. So deadlocked at 23. Key situation here with Plante on serve. McCutcheon with a missile from the outside. Tennessee has been targeting Bis Bissler, and Bissler has missed a few of her passes. That one's spot on. So all offensive options available. Claire Wilson delivers perfectly to McCutcheon for the 24th point. Set point for South Carolina. And Chase. Keeps Tennessee alive, we're tied at 24. Raven Chase a little early, that set maybe a little bit too high, so hang time from Raven Chase. She just bumps it down with her hand, not a bump, but more of a bounce off of her hand down for the tying point. Five kills for Chase. Tennessee in the net, and it's set point once again for South Carolina. And that'll be Caroline Kerr in the net. Kerr is gonna go back. And she's not motioning over to her coach to say it's a challenge. I think both players were in the net. The question was when the net touch took place. And there is the clear net touch. Another great view from our production team. Block from South Carolina. Another opportunity for Moore. She's denied again. Pierre Fletcher gets the best of Janasia Moore. And South Carolina takes set to 26-24. A block. Torres serves her counterpart in Bissler. Abianati ties it up at one. Anati with some clean play in sets one and two. Still attacking very efficiently. She's jumping into the gap very properly here, but she goes into the gap and then swings the opposite way around the block of Raven Chase. Speaking of Raven Chase, she gets a powerful kill for Tennessee. Well located from Caroline Kerr to Raven Chase, and Raven Chase was able to take that virtually at the peak of her reach, working around the block, bouncing the ball for an emphatic kill. Elena Johnson is coming over, and there's Fletcher to clean it up for South Carolina. 
Tennessee continues to struggle with an answer for the transition offense of South Carolina and on service reception. South Carolina has had the answer, overwhelming the defense of Tennessee for most of this ball game. The block is there for the Gamecocks. Well, now they're going to call the point to Tennessee, Paul. There's some confusion here, and Coach Mendoza would like an explanation. So the question is whether or not that block was in or out. We're going to see a discussion ruling, and the ruling is going to be that it did catch the line and the in call. So good review by Coach Tom Mendoza. Coach Tom Mendoza still with two challenges in hand because that challenge did not result in his being incorrect. Of course, if you are correct, then you keep your challenges. If not, then you lose them throughout the course of the ball game. The set over Love it. Let's go back on it. And again, it's the ball control of Tennessee that is struggling here. South Carolina has shown that they're going to serve as aggressively as they can. Of course, you talked with assistant coach Ethan Fister. He pointed out that they don't want, that they would love to get aces, but they want to at least put pressure on the service reception and limit the options of Tennessee. One of the better options for Tennessee today has been Raven Chase. She's a veteran, a sixth-year player. I mentioned she was a transfer from Eastern Michigan, but she sat out her first season in Ypsilanti, and then, of course, with the extra year for COVID. A whistle and a lady vol in the net, and that is Chase. Chase having a reasonably good ball game, effectively out on the floor. Seven kills, no attack errors, but there it's the blocking error by her in the net, allowing for the immediate point that her second blocking error of the ball game. Five to three lead for the Gamecocks. Thompson serves Lovett. Moore, Johnson gets to it. Moore. and that tool off of Tyra Smith. Tyra Smith in position, but she needs to drop that right arm down into the line to prevent from being tooled. That ball goes off her arm and out of bounds. And the ace for Abby Eckler. We're tied at five here in set three. Wonderful serve, that ball on the float, just drops off a ledge, falling nearly straight down in front of the reaching arms of Bissler. Yes, Rupert, the connection there between Kimmy Thompson and Ellie Rupert. That's a perfect example of forcing the use of the middle even when it's not opportune. Kimmy Thompson goes to the middle and Ellie Rupert, nobody in the gym on the Tennessee side thought they would set her. That leaves her available to go against one block. Ellie Rupert finishes it off. Team leader in hitting percentage coming into today, 285, the number for Ellie Rupert. This is Moore with a tip. Tyra Smith, she's denied. Moore combining with Granbury. Tyra Smith didn't take the approach that she needed to get this attack. She really was stuck inside of 10 feet before taking off that prevented her from getting a good view of the block. She hits right into the block. Credit the stuff to Tennessee. It's pushed out to McCutcheon. Off the block and out of play. Another kill for Lauren McCutcheon. She's in double digits now with 10. Good swing by McCutcheon getting the tool to go. She has found success swinging high and into the angle. The middle block got a paw on it, but that ball still sailed out of bounds. Fingle off the hands of the block. White sides will set up McCutcheon. Torres there with the dig. Here's Fingle. Another opportunity. There's Rupert. Free ball for Tennessee. They'll go back to Fingle, and she puts it down. Unique save from Ellie Ruprecht. It's not often you get a beach dig from a middle blocker, but she was caught out of position. She was able to beach dig and keep the rally alive, but eventually too much Fingal. And again, the deceptive set from Kerr. 
Instead of telegraphing that set, I can't say it enough, she holds those hands high and delivers at the last second, allowing for a gap for Fingal. 11 kills now for Fingal. Great opportunity here for Tennessee. They went to love it. McCutcheon. Torres will set up Fingal, tips it into the block. McCutcheon and Anadi were there defensively for South Carolina. Tough spot for Tennessee, that ball just a little bit too tight. Fingal didn't really have anywhere to go. There was McCutcheon on the spot to stop the ball. It's an eight to seven lead for the Gamecocks. Claire Wilson behind the service line. Fingal. Beautiful setup from Caroline Kerr. And the message from the Tennessee staff at this point needs to be set Fingal early and often. She's your reigning, as you pointed out, Avka, second team All American for a reason. 12 kills, hitting 455 on the ball game. Service error for Tennessee. And that's their sixth of the match. Marina Johnson back in for South Carolina. She leads the game path with 13 kills today. See if they feature here, her here in set three. An opportunity off the hands of the block. And another kill for Elena Johnson in her 14th. Great discipline from Kiyun Fletcher to chase down the dig on the tip. She's over on the right side and she chases it all the way down, eventually creating an opportunity. Johnson finishes it off with a high hand. It's Fingal. It was too powerful for McCutcheon to handle. And Fingal's just going to continue to get fed here as long as South Carolina has no answer for her. So far, they haven't on this ball game. So far, only two attack errors for Fingal, hitting at a 458 clip. Service error for Fingal. In South Carolina, two point lead, 11 and nine here in set three. So a quiet set of three rotations for Abi Anadi. Anadi will come out for Ellie Ruprich now, who is beginning to heat up on the block. Bit of a rush serve from Bissler, you can tell Bissler's rhythm was off. I think that adrenaline is starting to pump here in South Carolina, trying to finish things off in three to wrap up their season. So here's Erica Lovett, junior from Union, Georgia. Fletcher winds up. This is Moore. McCutcheon gets there. Bissler chases it down. Chase off the hands of the block. Keyun Fletcher delivers for South Carolina. And the lead is back to two. The solo block from Elena Johnson slowed the ball up, allowed the team to get in transition. Kick it back to Keyun Fletcher. Fletcher with the bomb into the deep court. Eighth kill for Keyun Fletcher. Thompson. This is Moore, rolled it into the block. Oh, it's punched over by Tennessee. Rupert asking for a touch, and she'll get it. And so the up ref is going to call the touch on the defensive side of the ball. No debate on the Tennessee side. I don't blame either team for not challenging. Generally, a great officiating crew, our R1, Michael O'Connor, up, Stephen Shefford down, patrolling this ball game today. Heading behind the center, that was Raven Chase. In system ball, how about the backside set to Raven Chase? Raven Chase has found success on the slide and the back quick there, no different. How about that hard cut to 10 feet? Raven Chase finding the open space. Chase is hitting 667 today. Eight kills, or season high is 13. That was against Arkansas. 
Free ball opportunity for Tennessee. They'll push it out some more. And Tyra Smith continues to struggle on the block. She still is not dropping that right arm to prevent from being tooled. She's putting her arms straight up. The result, these balls are glancing out of bounds. Another tool against Tyra Smith. Credit the point to Tennessee. Yes, sir. Elena Johnson continues to fire away from the outside. I like that shoot set out to Elena Johnson, preventing the block from being perfectly in position. I wouldn't call it a shoot set from that review, but certainly not a high ball. Preventing the block from being in position. And then the monster swing from Elena Johnson. She leads all attackers today. She's got 15 kills. Two away from her career high. Her is unable to keep that alive for Tennessee. And it's a three-point lead for South Carolina, which will bring us to immediate. Doctor, you'd, you'd tell me I was crazy, but in this case, Elena Johnson having a fantastic outing and the reason for them being up two sets to none. Thompson with the dig against Fingal. This is more. Oh, it's kept alive by Whitesides. And back over. This time, Moore throws it at Kimmy Thompson. And the block is there for Tennessee. But how about the defense from South Carolina? Excellent, scrappy defense from South Carolina. A setting mistake on the side of Kimmy Thompson. Her best offensive threats were Ellie Ruprick and also McCutcheon out there. But instead, the kick back to Tyra Smith. Tyra Smith hits into the block. An unfortunate error for South Carolina. So now three rotations with Morgan Fingal in the front row with Caroline Kerr in the back row on serve. Key point for Tennessee to try to flip the script on this third set. And they'll have Moore and Granberry up front as well. And they'll win the point off the serve. Tennessee is within one. Moore has had an exceptional ball game of her own right, 10 kills on the ball game. She's seen a lot of out of system sets. That's why her attack percentage is a little low at 161. And grad transfer from Ohio State. An attack error for South Carolina. We're tied at 15 and Gamecocks are gonna call timeout. Back to action, tied at 15 here in set three. McCutcheon reaches for that. This is Fingal. And a missed set that set just out of the range of McCutcheon. All McCutcheon could do was reach up and put her fingertips on it. The result, free ball opportunity. Can't give too many of those to Morgan Fingal and company. Fingal finishes the deal. And service error for the Lady Vols. That's their eighth. The Rackham Watt looks on. She's calm and cool on the outside, but I think her, her heart is beating 150 a minute inside as her Tennessee squad finds themselves down by two. Connection a little off between Kerr and Granbury. They'll try it again. And they'll get the kill. Kiki Granbury, the sophomore from Winter Garden, Florida. Abianati nearly had the solo block, but she was a little out, out of balance when trying to get in position. Therefore, her arms weren't entirely pressed over the net. Getting the job done is Kiki Granberry. Granberry was an all freshman team selection back in 2022. This is Smith. Tyra Smith gets the kill for the Gamecocks. Redshirt freshman from Monk's Corner. Good swing from Tyra Smith to go high hands. She had been blocked trying to go straight down with the ball, so she makes a nice adjustment going high hands. Gets the fingertips, that ball sails out of the out of bounds. Three key rotations now for Keun Fletcher, easily South Carolina's top attacker on the season. And Venati and McCutcheon up front as well. Fingal blazes one just past Whitesides. Well, sure enough, we saw that graphic out of the timeout. Fingal has evened her kill rate with Elena Johnson. She and Fingal both with 15 kills now. And you see any open space, Fingal is going to make you pay. Fingal had 20 on Wednesday in a double-double effort against Mississippi State. Going to have a 
Tennessee player in the net. So it'll be a net touch against Tennessee to negate that point. Raven Chase was the only one that went over quietly into the huddle because she knew she was called on that penalty. Get a substitution on the Tennessee side. So Erica Lovett coming back into the game in place of Fonte. More from the back row. It's sent back by Anadi. Gamecocks get the point. Anadi gets one back after getting killed with those a lot better than does any away team who really only gets a couple practices a year in this gym. CBC, of course, a more intimate, intimate, excuse me, setting as opposed to some of the other arenas around the SEC that can be more cavernous. That's right. Fingal pushes it into the gap between a diving Bissler and McCutcheon. That's a great scouting report play by Fingal. Fingal, instead of hanging away, recognizes that there will be a gap between left back and middle back when they have defended the right side attack. She pushes it into that space nicely for another point. Now she's back to serve. Targets McCutcheon. Keyun Fletcher. Good answer from Fletcher. And again, that in-system ball allows for that back set, a deceptive back set. Getting the job done is Claire Wilson delivering a ball to Keyun Fletcher for the bomb. Gamecocks first to 20 in set three. Fingal tips it from the back row. Elena Johnson off the hands of the block. And pushing for the kill is Mackenzie Plante. Good push over there on the left side. Smart move by Plante. It's about the only play she had was to go push that ball a little bit low to attack. Smart play by Plante. She'll go back to serve. Looking for the back line, she won't find it. That ball sailed just long, so we'll get a serving substitution. Defensive specialist McElveen coming in on serve. As you see those service errors adding up for both squads. Tennessee missing that one at a critical time. Almost an ace for McElveen. Instead, it'll be a kill on the outside for Elena Johnson. Johnson recognized that she was going to have a late block, so she rears back and dials up a 100 on that one, hitting the ball in front of the defender. Big banging swing, no chance for Plante. Accomplishing that feat. McElveen serves Torres. This is Moore. Elena Johnson with another rocket. Putting service pressure on Tennessee. All Tennessee could do was send it over to Bissler. Easy free ball, Claire Wilson to Johnson. Johnson with another bomb. We've seen it with this tempo, all ball game. A late block, no chance for the defense of Tennessee. 17 kills for Elena Johnson. Tying her career high. Moore is blocked. Ellie Rupert fired up. It's match point for South Carolina. Great close by Rupert and also great discipline not to jump too soon. She got out there in time, seals it off. That ball goes down, you see exuberance for the 24th point. Fingal from the back row, McElveen is there. And the block keeps Tennessee alive. Raven Chase with the solo, Kerr couldn't quite make it over there, so the solo block from Chase. South Carolina now with three set points. They'll do it with Bissler, McCutcheon, and Johnson on service reception. Front row attacking also Ellie Rupert. Back to serve. Um, 
miscommunication for South Carolina. Gives Tennessee another point. Timeout, Gamecocks. Tough me mentality play there. Wrap things up here in the Carolina Volleyball Center. South Carolina sweeps Tennessee 25-23, 26-24, 25-22. To Paul, they knock off the number eight team in the country. South Carolina finishes with a bang and proves.